gorgeous day after a week of solid rain. Good afternoon and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be installing the Pittman and Idler Arm bracket supports from Cognito on the Duramax and I'm going to be driving the Hellcat up there to pick up some tools that I need. So it's time to fire up the kitty. First time in a very long time. I know you guys have been waiting for a vlog on the Hellcat so here we go. We're going to fire it up. American Muscle. <laughs> unexpected when you get on it. It's so damn fast and it sounds amazing. After not driving it for a month, it's just absolutely epic to drive the Hellcat. So I'm going to go in there and grab this now. Then it's off to Home Depot to get another 20 volt cordless impact gun as my old one took a dump on me. Yeah, so that sucks. I have to get another one. Uh, probably going to be picking up a DeWalt because they're pretty inexpensive for what they are and 750 foot-pounds of torque is more than enough. So that's the plan, and then it'll be off to work on Mad Max. I used to have a full air compressor set up with tons of air tools, and battery and cordless is the way of the future. Fortunately, just like cars, it's kind of sad. You know, this is like a Tesla kind of deal. The Tesla cars have all that torque. That's why these battery-powered impact drivers produce so much torque. Now, in comparison to an air compressor, unless of course you have those 1,000 or 1,500 foot-pound guns that run off an air compressor, but they're very expensive, and uh, Milwaukee has a 1,400 foot-pound 20-volt uh, cordless, so that is definitely impressive. Okay, with the sway bar, removed off the frame i can now access the pitman arm and idler arm with everything else still bolted together i'm gonna loosen the nut on the idler arm support as well as the pitman arm once i do that i am going to take off these two bolts holding the idler arm support as well as the three bolts and the fender liner of the driver's side that hold the steering motor in place once i remove those three bolts and the two bolts over here I'll be able to use a pry bar to lift the whole center link up, which will allow me to get this nut off because you can see there's no clearance here. Uh, but removing the three bolts over here and the two bolts and the idle arm will allow me to lift the link. But to make it even easier than that, I'm going to get up under here on the pitman arm on the center link. I'm going to remove this nut and the other nut. Not completely remove it, just kind of loosen it and bring it down a little bit which is going to make it even easier to raise the rack to get the nut off the pitman arm and idler arm. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so unfortunately, this is the second day of the vlog. Uh, the wrench that I bought was the wrong size yet again. There's multiple sizes for the pitman arm nut on these Duramaxes, and they range from one and a quarter, one and three eighths, one and five eighths, one and seven sixteenths, and apparently I have one and three quarters. Yikes, that is huge. Uh, that is the size I'm going to need. So I'm going to have to pick up a crescent wrench at Tractor Supply. I cannot believe how big the nut is on the pitman arm. And I know for a fact it is going to be one heck of a job to get it off. So here we go. The one and three quarters as well as the adjustable 24 inch crescent wrench. I wasn't taking any chances this time. These are definitely going to get the job done or at least I hope they will. That's why I got the adjustable crescent wrench so I don't have to worry about going back out again. So there we have it. The nut is finally loose. I went ahead and loosened that nut and it was the crescent wrench that saved the day. That three quarters was too small yet again. So the next step is to remove the retaining nuts on the idler arm and pitman arm on the center link. Both of them need to be loosened and then I will be able to remove the bolts holding the idler arm bracket and the steering motor on the other side. And then once that's done, I can install Cognito's support brackets. Okay, now that we've got that done, everything's ready to go. It's time to take out one, two, and the third bolt right here, which will allow me to move the power steering motor up to get the nut off and get the bracket adapter on. So this is the next step. The fender liner could get in the way. I may have to remove it, but we'll see.
Well, the power steering motor is now unbolted. I'll be able to go underneath. I can move the unit now. See, I can move it. Now I'll be able to lift it up and get this nut off. Next, it's the two bolts holding the idler arm bracket in place. Once these two bolts are removed, the whole rack will move up and down, allowing me to get these nuts off because it sucks there's just no clearance here. But there will be in a few minutes. One important detail I forgot to mention is if you have a steering stabilizer, you're gonna have to move it out of the way from this bracket mount on the frame. This way you can move the steering and center link up. You're not gonna be able to move any of this uh, if this is connected. And with a breaker bar, you can see I can move the whole assembly up and down. It's time to remove the nut off the pitman arm right here and I'll use the breaker bar to pry up to make enough clearance for the nut to come out. So moving the power steering motor up, I can clear just enough room to get this nut off. Like so. Nut and washer are now off. So you can see the idler arm bracket is going this way because going up there was no more room. I had to turn the steering assembly by pushing the wheel and that allowed me to move the arm back and forth and wiggle the bracket out to get the nut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble Cognito's Pitman and idler arm support, and then I'm gonna get them on here, get the idler arm bracket back to where it needs to be and start fastening everything up. One of these nuts is a jam nut. We're gonna get that all the way up to the front. Like that, we're gonna do the idler arm first. It's going to go through just like that and then we're going to get some thread locker on the other jam nut we're just going to put a little bit of thread locker right here we're only going to finger tighten the jam nuts right now so you can see this is how it's gonna be set up. One lock washer, one shank nut, and let's go install this on the idler arm. There is the Cognito idler arm support bracket installed. I'm gonna get the nut put back on and then get the idler arm put back into its factory mounting position and then I'll be able to finish putting this together and then I'll move over to the Pitman arm. Okay, so the idler arm support is now back in the bracket on the frame. So when the idler arm support came out of the mounting bracket here, it came this way. It was really a pain in the butt to get it back in. I had to sweep the steering left to right to get it into place and then use a tapered punch to line up the holes. But now that I've done that, I can get these bolts in here snugged and then I can go ahead over here on the pitman arm and I can install the uh, Cognito support bracket, the washer, and the nut, and I'm going to snug that. Then it's time to come over here and get the bolts on this side installed, and once I do that, I can snug all five of those bolts, three over here and two on the idler arm support. Once they're locked in, I can torque these down here, and then everything should be good to go. I can get under the truck and finish off with the tapered spherical bushings. So I got my thread locker on here. I'm gonna feed this through. Jam nut is all the way towards the actual bushing. I'm gonna thread this on. The lock washer goes on the stud itself going to the idler arm. The spherical bushing will come over top like so. Setting up the pitman arm assembly Right here, I'm gonna put the jam nut again on first, all the way to the end. And then it seats. Inside the Pitman arm support. I'm not gonna put my thread locker on until last. I'm gonna get this in this way. There we go. And I'm gonna pry up to get myself as much room as possible got this bracket installed you got to make sure the steering wheel is turned all the way to the left in order for this to line up I'm gonna go ahead and put on my lock washer on the top I was just checking to make sure that it would line up and it does 
Uh, so the lock washer is going to go on first. Sorry about the shaky camera, one-handing all of this stuff. So now it is installed on this side. I'm going to get the, uh, the nut installed in a minute. First, I gotta go to the other side though and make sure it's connected to the pitman shaft. Okay, the nut is on the pitman arm as well as the Cognito pitman arm bracket support. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the power steering assembly mounted to the frame. And once I get the holes lined up and mounted to the frame, I can torque this nut as well as the bolts and nuts on the idler arm support. And then we'll be good to go. Gonna move to the front side and just finish up the install. This install was definitely a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, I would say kind of a nightmare. If you guys plan on installing uh, the support brackets on your Duramax, I highly suggest you have a one and three eighths, a one and five eighths, a one and a half, one and three quarter, and a one and seven sixteenths uh, wrench, open end crescent wrench, or something like that, because you're gonna need those sizes. As these trucks come with different size nuts on the pitment motor arm, so you're gonna want to have those ahead of time. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have jack stands, wood, a jack. This way you can lift the truck up. You're also gonna need uh, an impact gun, a 20 volt cordless. This way you can uh, get those nasty bolts off that hold the steering motor assembly as they're very tough. I'd also recommend making sure you guys have a torque wrench, a couple of 18 millimeters, a couple of uh, 22, 24 millimeter sockets, a lot of different things you're gonna need to do the job. It's just a very big pain in the butt, uh, but it's worth it. It was worth everything. So if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, comment below. What do you guys think of the nightmare we went through? But it was definitely worth it. The truck drives so much better. Don't forget to check out drivewoodemons.com. Get your key tags, Mopar, no car, flip it over, drivewoodemons on the other side. Hoodies, because the winter is coming up. Get your drivewoodemons hoodie, as well as t-shirts. Support the channel, drivewoodemons.com. Got the call out coming out on the 20th of October with Street Speed 717 and Paul at Family Cruise, and I will be out there. For all my returning subscribers, thank you so much for watching all my videos. I couldn't do it without you guys. Be sure to share the channel, share the videos, watch them, comment, interact with me. I got a giveaway coming up at 20,000. So be prepared for that. But until the next video, take care and have a great day.